In the previous four problems, every bit of information that I gave you about the line contained the slope of the line. I'm not doing that now. Now I'm just saying, here are two points. Write the equation of the line that goes through these. Well, we're not at a loss because one of the pieces of information, one of the formulas that I gave you at the beginning of this section was the formula for finding the slope. Remember, the slope is the change in y over the change in x. So we know the formula, we just have to plug these guys in. Now it doesn't really matter how you label these as long as you make sure that you say this is the first point, this is the second point. So if you want to call this one x1, then this has to be y1. They have to, they have, to have the same subscript. Uh, just like over here, if you're going to call that x2, this has to be y2. Now when you plug into the slope formula, this is what I want you to do. Because we've got negatives running around, I want you to go ahead and write your parentheses for those coordinates that you're going to be plugging into this formula. Because I need you to understand there's subtraction that's already inherent as part of this formula. Uh, and not to be confused with the negative or any negative signs you may see with your coordinates. So y2 is this guy. So I'm going to write negative 8. y1 is positive 8. x2 is 3. And x1 is negative 1. And so now we just, we just work this out. Let's clean up these parentheses. So we have a negative 8 minus 8 over, this is 3, minus times negative is going to make that a positive 1. So we end up with negative 16 over positive 4, which means that my slope is negative 4. So now I've got my slope. And I've got two points to pick from. It doesn't matter which point I choose, they're both on the same line. So use the slope, pick a point, and it's just like the problems that we had in the last video. So down here, let me go ahead and say that y equals mx plus b, and let's see what we get. So first of all, let's use negative 1, 8. I said the ordered pair doesn't really matter if I use this or that. So this is the first one. Let's just use that. So my y value is 8. My slope is negative 4, and my x value is negative 1. All right, so we get 8 is equal to 4 plus b. Subtract the 4 and b equals 4. So taking these two pieces of information together, that's going to give me the equation y equals negative 4x plus b. Now there was another form that I showed you quite a while ago. And that was the point slope form. And I said, I don't really like to use that guy. I can, but he's not my favorite thing to work with. So, so the point slope formula is used for when you have a point and you've got a slope. And it looks like this. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Now the reason I don't really like this formula is because now you've got parentheses, you've got extra subtraction, there are more moving parts, which means there are more places for us to make mistakes. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to use this other ordered pair here, plug it in for the x1 and the y1, and see if I get the same answer that I had over here. So this is going to be y minus, I'm going to use this y coordinate, so that's negative 8. Make sure you use parentheses correctly when you substitute. My slope is negative 4, and then x minus the corresponding x value here was 3. And now we're just going to clean things up a little bit. So this becomes y plus 8. Over here, that set of parentheses doesn't really do anything extra for us, so it's really just x minus 3. So we can distribute that negative 4. So it's negative 4x, negative 4 times negative 3 is positive. 12. To finish solving this equation for y, to put it in slope intercept form, we subtract both sides by 8, and y equals negative 4x plus 4. We get the same equation 
using a different form. So now you know that you have options. Now, I prefer this, but that's just me, right? What do I know? All right, now let's take a look at this other example that popped up down here. You're again passing through two different points. So we need to find the slope first so that we can accurately work this problem. All right, so my slope is again the change in y over the change in x. So let's use those parentheses correctly. All right, so y2 is going to be this guy, that's 26. Y1 is 17, and then X2 is 85, and X1 is 22. All right, let's see what we get here. All right, so without the parentheses, this is just 26 minus 17 over 85 minus 22. Cleaning this up, 26 minus 9, 19, 26 minus 17 is 9 and 85 minus 22 is 63. This does not look like fun, but we can simplify this and we can find out that our slope is going to be 1 over 7 when you reduce that. All right, so we got a we have a slope that's a fraction and in what we talked about in the last video, I mentioned if this denominator can go into this x value we should just go straight to y equals mx plus b and plug things in. But 7 and the 22 won't reduce, nor will 7 and 85 reduce. So when we write that slope-intercept form, I'm not going to plug in everything. I'm only going to plug in that fraction, and then we're going to do some manipulating here, just like, we, just like we did in problem number 4. So y is equal to 1 seventh x plus I don't know, right? This is where we do the dot, dot, dot. We're gonna find out what this is eventually, but we're, we're gonna get there. All right, so when we did this, we moved the x term to the left, so that becomes a negative 1 7th x plus y equals something. And then we want to clear away the fraction and the negative. Now you can do this all in the same step. You can multiply both sides times the 7 to get rid of the denominator, and the negative to fix that sign. So do that on both sides. So the negative and the 7 are going to reduce, leaving us with just x. The negative 7 times y gives us negative 7y. And it's going to equal some number. And this is where we go when we figure out what that number is. So it doesn't matter which ordered pair I choose. If I choose uh, 22, 17, or 8526, I should get the same number over here. So this is a bit of work that we have to do. Just a bit of arithmetic, really. So my x value, I'm going to pick these guys. These are smaller. Should be easier, right? So 22 minus 7 times 17. Once I do this math, that's going to give me that constant over there. It's not going to be the same as the b value. Um, because we did some manipulating to get here, but it is going to tell me exactly what this number is in standard form. All right, so we have 22 minus 7 times 17, so that's going to be 119. And when we do the math here, we get negative 97. So that's the number that goes here, just like that. So here is our equation. Now, it should be easy enough for you to check this by going to this other ordered pair, right? So if I had used 85 and 26 instead, so that would have been 85 minus 7 times 26. That's 85 minus, so if I do the math, it's going to be 182. And we do the subtraction, and we also get negative 97. So we should feel really good about ourselves that we have an equation that not only you know looks good, but we've verified that both of these ordered pairs, when you plug them in, it gives you negative 97.
So we're good.